Okay. I am going to go ahead and screen share. Here we go. And we'll stop here and make sure. Can everybody see my PowerPoint presentation? Just give me a thumbs up if you can, please. Awesome. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so our topic today is imposter syndrome. And we're going to talk about kind of understanding the syndrome and then some steps to breaking its cycle. Um, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Christine Reed and I am a counselor by trade. I work in the Mesa STEM Academic Success Center uh, at Allen Hancock College, and I've also coordinated the program here since 2009. Um, I've been actually with the college for 28 years, and I spent my first 13 years of my career running the University Transfer Center. So my whole career has really surrounded around working with students that are going on to university. Um, and in the since 2009, I've had this great pleasure of working specifically with STEM students. And I've learned so much about um, our STEM students and the challenges that they face. I first actually learned about imposter syndrome um, and it became very um, kind of prevalent um, in my understanding of the challenges that our STEM students face in the fall of 2016 when I went on sabbatical. And my sabbatical research project surrounded around um, women, specifically Latina students, who were majoring in engineering and computer science. And the struggles that they faced being underrepresented within those majors from a gender perspective. Um, and so it was very, it was a, a big um, source of research that I did during that uh, sabbatical to understand imposter syndrome and um, how I can work and support the students that are caught in the, what I like to say, web of it. And we'll talk more about that. Um, so before I get started, um, I also want to say that we originally had another person from um, Cabrillo who was going to be presenting this, and unfortunately, they couldn't do that, do that presentation. Um, so I was really excited, actually, at the opportunity to step in and put this presentation together. Um, and I did that last week. So this is the first time I've actually presented it. So in some ways, I feel a little bit like an imposter because this is new for me. I've never presented at this um, on this specific topic. Um, so uh, we're going to go through this together. And I am so excited to learn um, as we go through this. Um, so my first slide here, um, I wanted to let's just see if it's here we go. There we go. I would like it to for us to just to get to know each other a little bit. And if you can put in the chat your favorite flavor of ice cream, I would like to see what your favorite flavors of ice cream are. If you can put that in the chat for me. Ooh, I like mint chocolate chip too. Chocolate malted crunch. Oh, that's a good one. Raspberry. Oh, sorbet. Cookies and cream. We all have different flavors that we like. I love that. Okay, now I want you to flood the um, chat with your favorite animal. Oh, butter pecan. Yum. Give me your favorite animals. Kingfisher, nice. 
Red-eye tree frog. You guys are very specific. I love this. Some of you must be biology majors. Favorite animals? Others? Bald eagle, yes, beautiful animal. Great. Okay, now I wanna see what is your favorite color? Oh, a dolphin, love it. Your favorite color, please. Green, green. Oh, we have a, we have a, that's our first match actually. Two greens. Lavender, that's one of my favorites too. Good. Pink, awesome. Other colors? Okay, now flood the chat, please, with your favorite food. Pizza, as seen on the screen. Others, burgers, oh, nice. Very specific there, Dylan. Tacos, awesome. Edith, thank you. Others, favorite food, tacos. Oh, we have a match, nice. Mac and cheese, yum, awesome. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Rande. Okay, and then one last one. Give me your favorite season. If you're looking at fall, spring, summer, or winter, what's your favorite season? Fall, nice. Thank you, Stephanie. Summer, mine is two. <laughs> spring, summer, spring. Awesome, we have some matches there. Nice, okay. That gives me a lot of ideas. Thank you so much for participating in that. And we are going to move forward here. And let me just make sure that this is moving forward. Okay. So I want to step, I want to step a little bit into imposter syndrome. And when we think about imposter syndrome, I want to set the context as to what is imposter syndrome. So let's talk a little bit about how it is defined. And basically, it is defined as it's an internal belief. It's something we believe inside of ourselves that for whatever reason, the success that we have in, in encountered is due to luck or it's something that is un, undeserving. Um, but it's in, it's in spite of everything that we already have accomplished. So when we look at our accomplishments, for some reason, we're internalizing a belief that we haven't necessarily deserved it. Um, it also, we also have this belief system that we're not as competent or intelligent as others might think that we are. For some reason, we believe that, that others think that we're smarter than what, how we see ourselves. And there's an underlying fear that soon enough we'll be discovered the truth, that we're not as smart as others see us as, that the truth is going to come out. And that for some reason, we are, you know, a poser or we're a fraud or we're, we're phony. Um, and the pressure that this internal belief system puts on ourselves, it can manifest in our life a certain level of stress, a certain level of anxieties and fears. We can engage in negative self-talk. Talk. We can engage in um, some uh, nervousness. Um, it can make us feel depressed um, and it can make us feel inadequate for some reason. Um, and I love this uh, kind of dis um, this display here, what, um, what imposter syndrome feels like. It's like, you know, we're this, what, what we think we know and what we perceive that others know. And we are comparing ourselves to that. For some reason, we have this thought that everybody else knows a lot more than what we know. 
And we internalize that and think that we are an imposter in a situation that is beyond our capabilities. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I think you're sharing the wrong portion of your screen. We can oh, see PowerPoint here. Thank you, Dylan. You can interrupt me anytime you want. Okay, let's let me do this. Um, let's do this. So what are you seeing, Dylan? I am seeing PowerPoint still. Uh, not the, oh wait, nope, black screen. Now it's back to the PowerPoint window. And is it just the, um, under, is it the title page? Yeah. Okay, let me start all over again then. Oh. Okay, so let's stop. Okay, let's do this. Okay, bear with me one second. Da, da, da. I'm so glad you said something. It's the uh, title slide again. Okay. So then did you see, so do you see the screen now with the bunny? Yes. Okay, great. And that was our favorite color. Okay, so here, let's go back to here. So this is when we were talking about the de definition. So now you can see the display in front of you, what the imposter syndrome feels like, right? Where we have this perception that everybody else knows potentially more than what we do. And um, we're, we're kind of consumed by that. And you can see, um, so it's that those internalizing beliefs that our success is due to luck or some reason undeserving. And this is kind of, the, it builds upon itself that we start to believe that we're not as competent or as intelligent as others perceive us. And soon enough that will be discovered. And that manifests in stress, anxiety, fear, and negative self-talk. All right, now are we moving along, Dylan? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. So I want you all to take a few minutes and close your eyes. And I want you to imagine yourself. So sit back and close your eyes and listen to my words. And I want you to imagine yourself sitting in a Calc 2, Calculus 2 class. And you have taken an exam and you're getting it back. And the instructor is handing back the exam and you are handed back yours and it says 75% on it. And you're looking around and you're looking at the expressions of other students in the class and you're trying to read and measure based on their reactions how you did in comparison. And I want you to think about the emotion that you're feeling right now. How does that feel inside? And I want you to flood my chat again with those terms, with an emotion. And I can't see this. So put in the chat the emotion that you're feeling. Embarrassed and ashamed. Pensive. Hurt. Confused. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And those are all 
really, really important emotions to pay attention to. The interesting point part is that you really don't know how everybody else did. You don't know if you have the highest grade on that exam. You are assuming that that's not a good grade. It may also be the first time you're experiencing that type of grade. Okay, now. Did my screen move along, Dylan? Yeah, you're doing good now. Thank you. <laughs> so signs that you may be experiencing the mindset of imposter syndrome, that you aren't believing that you earned your success through your own efforts, and you may be attributing it to chance or luck or outside variables, that you're feeling inadequate in terms of intelligence or ability or your experiences and your achievements, um, that you are unable to internalize your own accomplishments and be proud of your own intelligence, that you're really judging yourself and potentially exaggerating flaws and failings that may not be failings. You may be feeling that um, if you are not the best in the class that you are not valued. You may be feeling that you're not enough or that you're qualified or that you have reached levels beyond your perceived abilities. I have a, many students who have spent time in my office um, sitting in Calculus 2, one of the hardest classes that there are in the STEM sequence, and they literally are considering dropping out of STEM because they got their first C grade on an exam. And they are feeling like, you know, how did I even get to this space? And they're starting to actually question their own abilities. And they will start to avoid new opportunities and challenges because they're fearful that they're not going to measure up. And they're looking around and they're observing people from different backgrounds or different genders. And they start to feel paralyzed by comparison. So if you see yourself in any of these bullet points, you may be under a mindset that we would call imposter syndrome or you're, you're starting to head down that road. And that's where we wanna make sure that you don't start to experience the fallout of that and the web that that will put you in. And it's a cycle and we're gonna talk about that. So in STEM, imposter syndrome is more common because of the rate of change and advancement is so rapid and it is a very competitive and intense major. And no human can actually keep up, but we step, we feel like we should. We feel like we should. We feel like we should be advancing. So when we feel that way, it results in, you know, we can start to feel overwhelmed with self-doubt. We can start to actually believe that if we fail, it won't be tolerated or accepted or that it's unnatural or it, that it shouldn't be happening, we can start to lose faith in our abilities and we can compare ourselves to other others and start to self-sabotage and start to think that we don't belong. And we are literally talking ourselves into that. We can start to lose sight that competencies and learning comes from learning from other people 
rather than comparing ourselves to other people. It can also make result in that we don't ask for help or that we start to isolate and not work in teams and not seek study groups because we're fearful that we'll be exposed for not being as competent as our peers. Um, and our students can start to feel an internal struggle that causes them to feel trapped and stuck. Um, and they end up procrastinating or over preparing and this causes a lot of stress. Okay. So interesting enough, 70% of adults experience feeling like an imposter at least once in their lifetime. As I shared with you guys, even this morning, I was thinking about the presentation that I was going to make today. And I was like, in some ways, because I've never done it before, I feel like an imposter myself. But it's just because it's new. The more that I do it, the more I'm going to become more natural at it. Um, it can make you feel like you're not good at what you're doing, but oftentimes those feelings are just based on fear and they're not based in reality. So imposter syndrome is built in, a, it's a cycle and it's a cycle that we get ourselves into. We have a new project that we have to work on or something that we have to learn. And because it's new, we've never done it before, it gives us anxiety. We can tend to over procrast I'm sorry, we can tend to procrastinate or we can tend to over prepare and we get stressed. And then we complete that project or we complete the learning lesson or the homework or whatever it is. And we do feel a sense of relief and we feel a sense of accomplishment, but the mindset will start to question that. And we start to rationalize somehow in our head that it was just it was lucky or that someone else would have done better kind of like we're sitting in that math you know calc 2 class and we're getting our test back and we got a 75 percent and we're you know sitting there saying well everybody else in class did better than that or my friends did better than that. and that may or may not be true but that message that lack of confidence gets inputted into our head and then it increases our doubt and our anxiety and then you know we start to feel like am I a fraud or am I a phony sitting here in preparation for this I was having a conversation with Dom Dalbello and we were talking about this and he for those of you that don't know Dom Dom is uh, our engineering professor at Allen Hancock College and what he was observing was that students um, might get a poor grade on their first exam. And they're so affected by it that it throws their whole confidence level off. And when that confidence level gets thrown off, it affects their belief in their, in their abilities. And they start to, um, not believe in themselves to the point where it affects their learning. It affects whether they're engaging with other um, students to learn. It affects whether they go to office hours to investigate what they material they are, ask questions. It affects how they study. It affects their stress level where their brain's not working fully enough to absorb the information and it becomes a downward spiral. Um, and that's what we don't want to happen. So, let's see, I'm just gonna, okay. So here's the real deal with the imposter syndrome. You do belong. You completely belong here. And in STEM, failure is a key component of learning. There are many, many students who do not get A's on their first exams in statics, in electrical circuits, in physics, in Calc 2. Those are tough classes and tough um, subjects to learn. 
and failure is part of the learning experience. In STEM, an innovation is built on failure. Rockets blow up the first time they go into the air and they learn from what went wrong and they go back to the drawing board and try and correct it and send them up again and they blow up again and they learn and they go back and they do it again until they have one that doesn't blow up. That's part of STEM and that's part of the learning experience. And we forget that sometimes when we're sitting in our classes and we got back a 75% in Calc 2 on our exam. And some students have never experienced failure before. Sometimes you will blow through high school doing just fantastic. And then you get here. And college may be the first time you experience a 75% on a math two exam or any math exam. And more of your peers are experiencing that than you think. When we look around and people are looking at their exam, you don't know just based on their expressions what, what they got. They could be smiling and they got a 75% because they're happy they got a 75% because they thought they failed it. But you interpret that as they got a 95% because that's when you would be smiling. And that's not necessarily true. So imposter syndrome is a mindset cycle. It, we literally psych ourselves out of what, in some ways, we are perfectly capable of learning and performing. And then the cycle gets reinforced and proves itself be only because of the mindset. So it creates a downward spiral in our confidence in ourselves, which blocks ourselves from doing well. Um, it is very predominant actually in women in engineering computer science because they don't see people similar to themselves in their peers or even their instructors. And so they feel they don't belong. And that is not true. We all as humans are in control of our thoughts and our beliefs. And STEM is challenging and the coursework is hard. And sometimes instructors in STEM can be a little bit aloof. Um, and all of your peers are not gonna be alike. They are gonna look different from you. Um, and there are some bigger bridges to cross, but you are capable and you do belong, and you are not a poser here. And we don't want to let anything convince you otherwise, especially yourself. And we do that through our mindset. So how do we break the cycle if we feel that we may feel like an imposter at times? So how many of you can you tell me in the chat how many of you have felt these feelings before? So just say a simple yes, or say a no, or say 50%, or um, never, or always. So when I ask you, have you felt these feelings before? What would you say? And let me know in the chat, please. Always, yes, yeah. Others? Have you felt these feelings before? And it's okay to say no. And I'll tell you why it's okay to say no. Because even if you haven't felt them, the awareness that you're here today, learning about it, you may, a friend may come to you and be saying and saying things to you that represent what you're learning here today. 
and hopefully you can share with them um, that they do belong, um, that this is a mindset, um, and that there are things that you can do to break the cycle of the mindset. So let's talk about that. So what are the steps? Um, and there's six. For, so when you feel that feeling, when you feel that you are getting into a mindset that um, tears away at your confidence, um, the first thing is to be aware of it and to literally tell yourself, I'm getting into a mindset that is tearing away at my confidence and I need to stop this. So how do we do that? First is focus on facts. Recognize the feelings associated with it and that they're rooted in fear. And if you can think in terms of that they're rooted in fear and not in fact, so what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of failure? What's the worst thing that's going to happen if I fail? Is it the end of the road for me? You know, what is, you know, is, is failure going to mean that I have to leave major, this major? You know, is failure going to stop me? Or is failure just part of the process of STEM? And what do I learn from failure? Is failure an opportunity? So know that these feelings are rated in fear and, and lay out what am I fearful of? And then shift your focus. What are my strengths? You know, what? let's focus on what I do well, not what I'm currently struggling with. And then don't compare yourself to others and translate that into fault with yourself because that will end up fueling the feeling that you're not good enough or that you don't belong. And focus on what others are saying and doing and choose to learn from them. But don't compare yourself. So there may be times when you're in a study group and what the study group is talking about, you have no idea what they're talking about. That's not a time for you to turn judgment upon yourself. That's a time for you to say, oh my gosh, I can learn from them. I'm not the expert right now in this, and I can learn from them. And there may be times in a study group where you have that part of the material down and you can excel and help others in that group. There may be times in class where the topic that's being explained to you in physics, you don't get at all. But there may be times where it really resonates with you. And knowing that that's normal and that's part of the process. And because of that time period where you're not necessarily knowing, you're going to have to you know, apply yourself a little bit more and pull on your strengths to learn it. But it doesn't mean that you're a fraud, that you're not smart enough. So focus on the facts and know that this is, you know, rooted in fear and identify those fear and focus on the facts of your strengths. Step number two, um, acknowledge and validate and let go. So don't dismiss or ignore or stuff the feelings. Acknowledge what's going on and honor them. Um, but knowing that feeling unqualified doesn't mean that you are. It just means that you're going to need to learn it and put an effort towards learning it. And it may mean that it takes time to learn it. Just because somebody sitting next to you, the material resonated with them super quickly, that doesn't mean that you're, you don't belong there or that you're a fraud. That just means that in that content, you need to put a little more effort in learning it. And there may be times where that person's sitting in a whole different class with you and some of that material they're really struggling with and you're not. Um, that it's okay to acknowledge your feelings that you feel inadequate. 
it's okay to say, I feel inadequate right now in this subject. Um, I'm going to validate that that's part of the human experience, but I'm not going to translate that inadequate, in, in, inadequate moment to a blanket statement that I'm not capable of this, that I'm posing for some reason in this major. So it's okay to, to validate I feel inadequate, but then let that go and focus in on what needs to be done and believe in your confidence to do it. Um, it's also good to minimize social media. Um, remember that social media, these images are exaggerated and a lot of times unrealistic. Um, and it's okay to feel like you don't belong for the moment. So don't necessarily fight that. Lean into those feelings, accept them and grow through them. Um, I remember a student who uh, her name was Cecia. Some of you, um, you know, know Cecia from being around here at Allen Hancock College. She's now uh, works for a company that she builds rockets for. But she was a single mom going through um, the program here in mechanical engineering. And um, Cecia struggled a lot with feeling like um, she didn't belong because she was a mechanical engineering major and a mom and a Latina and got a lot of reinforcement at home that she shouldn't be an engineer and um, that that she, girls like her didn't become engineers. And, um, you know, she would spend time in my office thinking that she should quit. And I didn't, we didn't want to discount those feelings. She needed to really feel them, but she also needed to grow through them and develop strengths through those. So to translate those feelings into um, developing muscle around them, emotional muscle around them. And um, as she navigated her, her way onto Cal Poly, she would constantly bring up those, that muscle again that she developed to um, to keep her confidence level up and not let that sense of lack of belonging overcome her. And then even in the workplace, uh, she was one woman of her team of 12 building rockets. And she again built up that muscle set or pulled on that muscle that she, that emotional, emotional muscle that she built going through the program to not let herself become um, a lack of confidence in that workplace. So it's okay to feel those feelings and lean into them and accept them, but to grow through them and build up your muscle. Okay. Okay, step three. Reframing our thoughts. So many of us feel that we don't have necessarily control over what goes on in our thoughts and our processes in our head. And um, it is transformational in our lives when we realize that we can control what goes on in our head. And um, recognizing that our thoughts have a lot of power in our life. And if you can reframe your thought process, you can reframe your reality. So recognizing when feelings come on of not belonging or that you're an imposter or that your confidence is starting to get squelched, to reformat how you're seeing that in your head and to reshape the, the narrative around that. Um, so I believe that it's very important for students to write out their accomplishments, write out their skill sets and their abilities and their successes. Um, and sometimes that's hard to do because we live in a society that likes to, you know, not necessarily um, acknowledge those. Sometimes people can be feeling like they're bragging or that they're, um, you know, coming off like they're um, overconfident or, um, you know, 
beliefs, believing that for some reason that they shouldn't be coming off conceited in their skill sets. And you can acknowledge your accomplishments and your abilities and your skill sets and your successes without feeling like you're bragging. Um, and that's an important skill set in life. So if you are having a hard time seeing those things, reach out to someone like your counselor or reach out to someone, you know, like your a parent or a positive role model in your life who can help you outline those and post those somewhere that you see every day and honor those within yourself because that's important. That helps reshape your mindset and your frame of mind. Um, don't focus on perfection. Uh, if everything was perfect in STEM, um, we wouldn't need half the engineers that we have. <laughs> um, you know, things, innovation is built around failure, like I said, it's not built around perfection. So, you know, focus on doing things reasonably well and reward yourself for reasonable success. And that's okay. So, you know, turn your thoughts into attributing your success um, to a, a platform of gratitude for it. And that will help reframe your thoughts. Okay, uh, step four. Uh, share how you're feeling. And sometimes that's easier said than done. Um, talk to people about how you're feeling um, and to people who you trust. Um, and, you know, these irrational beliefs, if they fester, um, they can get very uh, destructive and toxic in our lives. So talk about them. Um, seek out a mentor someone in STEM who, you know, you can look up to and that you can talk to openly. The great thing is that everybody's pretty much felt this at some point in their life and they can help you get through it um, and get it out and talk about it and develop a strategy to not let it become a mindset and become destructive. Um, and then also seek out resources at your college, like the health center. Many uh, or all colleges have counselor is available, not only in the academic side of the house, but also the health center side of the house through mental health. Um, so you can seek out therapists who can help you kind of get through this. Okay. Learn from your peers and help others. So no one is a master of everything, but everyone is a master of something. And when you're working with your peers, exchange knowledge and learn to master your new skill sets and honor the value that you add to helping others learn um, and work together to expand your knowledge and don't measure yourself against um, others and your abilities. And then also helping others can help us feel um, like we're um, a sense of reward, a sense of accomplishment in ourselves. So when you see people who are isolating or people that are not, um, you know, that are feeling like they don't belong, reach out to them and bring them into the fold of others. Um, that can really help even breaking the cycle of how we are feeling inferior ourselves. And then step six, remember to pat yourself on the back, celebrate your achievements, sink yourself into feeling good about yourself. And even, um, even if it feels awkward, practice giving yourself kudos. It gets easier the more you practice it and it's okay to do it. Um, share your successes with people who will reinforce good feelings and surround um, you know, yourself with those types of people and give others kudos. It feels good to tell people attaboys. So when you tell, when you see somebody who has done really well, even if you haven't done that well, tell them, you know, I'm really honored, like honor their successes. It feels better, it feels good to do that. And that energy will circle back to you. Um, use the feelings of pride in yourself as the source of empowerment and um, confidence that will pro propel you forward. So leverage that pride in yourself and circle your mindset around that. So never let feelings of infer inferiority 
or not belonging stop you from pursuing your goals. Again, remember that that's just your inner critic. So keep that keep that inner critic at bay and refuse that to stop you and um, you know continue to maintain a mindset that supports your drive and propels you forward. Okay. So questions or share outs. So I would love to give um, a little bit of time. I'm just doing a time check here. I would love to give a little bit of time if anybody wants to either in the chat or even um, open up your mic if you want to talk through anything that this presentation has sparked for you or if you have questions or if you want to share a moment um where you know this kind of overcame you and what you did about it or whatever this uh, presentation sparked in you i would love to hear about it you can either do it in the chat or you can also just um share out on your mic if you'd like What's the, okay, so question is, what's the most effective tool you use to combat um, uh, the syndrome myself? I would definitely say um, writing out a sense of accomplishments. I'm a very visual person. Um, so, which means that uh, auditorial doesn't always resonate with me. Um, visual is very important for me. So a lot of times what I'll do, is I'll, I love to write things out. So if I am feeling um, inferior, and um, this has happened to me, actually in my personal life, um, I compete, so I do uh, marathoning. And I remember the first time that I um, marathoned, it was a very small pool of people. So I wasn't racing against a huge amount of people. And um, that was a very different experience than when I went back and did Boston when there was 35,000 people versus um, you know 1,000 people. And it was super intimidating. And I didn't, I was really worried about that getting into my head and affecting my performance. I'm um, almost psyching myself out. Um, so I sat down and I wrote out um, some goals and I wrote out um, what how I wanted the experience to go. And I also wrote out the things that I saw that I was really good at. And I posted those um, on my mirror in my bedroom on the days leading up to the race. Um, I also put things into context as to that, um, what did I hope to accomplish? And I knew that when I was racing against um, a smaller pool of people, that winning um, was, in, was something that was achievable. I also knew when I was ra racing at Boston that running against 35,000 people um, was not potentially, winning wasn't a potential for me. And that was okay. So I reframed my goal. And my goal was to finish with a smile on my face and not necessarily worry about where I placed. And that helped me just reframe um, how I felt about myself through the experience. Would anybody else like to share or have anything to say in the chat? Oh, good, Dylan, thank you. Good. 
This presentation gave me some much needed perspective in the semester when I'm not doing well academically as I have previously. And, and every semester can be slightly different. Um, recognize that I could, I'm sorry, recognizing that I could be falling into a downward spiral early in the semester. I was ill-equipped Ill to deal with it, ha the imposter syndrome, having a game plan will be a greater, yes, and I encounter similar feelings. Good, thanks for sharing, Dylan. Yeah, I think it's really important that, you know, just because this semester you're getting hit with some really um, difficult classes, um, when maybe it's the first time you're experiencing that, recognizing and not casting a wide net that that's going to be true for all the semesters to come, or that for some reason it's a, some sort of a signal that you don't belong in this major. You know, it's really important not to cast that energy that that, you know, those conclusions to it because that's not necessarily true. Um, thank you, Stephanie. My imposter syndrome ran in high school when I was told by a professor I wouldn't pass a certain class because I didn't pass hers. And she said it publicly. And afterwards, a counselor told me I wouldn't be able to reach my goals. So I dropped out of high school. And three years later, I went back to complete my high school with my mom. But every so often, I get those inadequate feelings. That Thank you for sharing, Stephanie, because I think that's a really important point that um, sometimes external factors can really influence the internal um, dialogue and narrative. And that those, what people say to us most of the time, many, many, many times is not really a direct reflection of us. It speaks more about them than it does us. And no counselor should tell you that you're not capable of something. I would never tell any of my students that, um, you know, and that can really play havoc in your head and your emotions. And um, I think it's really important, especially in today's society of social media and of um, even email and um, you know, the judgment that sometimes people feel like it's okay to say, we need to be our own best advocate for shielding ourselves against that um, and not letting that turn into a stopping point for ourselves and really working on our mindset of what we believe we're capable of. I hope, Stephanie, that today's presentation gave you some tools um, because as you start to navigate your way, I'm assuming, um, you know, going to college and pursuing STEM, um, you know, that experience that you endured could start to show up in tapes in our head. And it's going to be really important not to let that happen. And, you know, taking some real, some steps to not letting that happen for your own success. Good. I'm glad that helped, Stephanie. Thanks, Tiffany. I tend to be very critical of myself when I've worked with people who were toxic. Yes, my achievements were disregarded by them. And after this happened for so long, I found that imposter syndrome really set in hard. Yeah, I ended up leaving my job later. Um, now I'm put off um, from doing any sort of work in the field. Thank you for sharing the information. I'll be using the information to help me rebuild my confidence, strength. Yeah, good. And resi resilience. Yeah. And, you know, again, this is a muscle that we build up. And if you think in terms, I always kind of think in terms of athleticism just because of that component of my life. But, you know, we don't start out um, winning races. Um we build up to that. And um, when I think in terms of mindset, this is a, a, um, a skill set. Um, and we don't always think in terms of mindset as a skill set, but getting, um, building up a muscle of our skill set to control our thoughts of how we see ourselves, that is a, um, a self development skill and we have to practice it. And it can be as easy as. Um, when you're in the car driving and 
for whatever reason, you say something to yourself in your head um, that is toxic or that is not supportive or destructive in some way, and you actually call yourself out on it and you say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to reframe it this way. Um, and thinking in terms of, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, you know, if you did fail an exam, it's you can really beat yourself up over that instead of saying this is an opportunity for growth and I'm going to build a muscle set around this. This is an opportunity for me to learn to experience failure. And what am I going to do about it? And I'm going to take it as a positive sign. I'm going to, you know, implement some things. I'm going to go talk to the professor. I'm going to go get some tutoring. I'm going to engage in this. I'm going to look at it from a different perspective versus continuing to beat yourself up. And for some reason, we're raised in a culture that teaches us to beat ourselves up. Um, and that continues this downward spiral of feeling like we don't belong or that, you know, we're an imposter. When you have the capabilities, you just can't let the mindset break you. Yeah. Yes, at any age, you can do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, any other share outs or comments in the chat? And Dylan, thank you so much for cluing me in to the technical issues I had early on. I appreciate that. And again, this is a skill set I'm learning the Zoom presentation. All right, everyone. Um, we are 503, so I want to be sensitive to your time and the pressures that you have on you. So I will hang out if anybody else wants to speak with me, but I um, am so thankful that you're here today and um, thank you for being here. And uh, I hope that you will continue to engage in the C6 seminars. I think our next one is next week um, at four o'clock here. And it is a really exciting one surrounded around belonging, sense of belonging and STEM. I'm excited. I will be in attendance because I want to watch it too. So um, thank you for being here. And I wish you guys all a wonderful rest of your week. Mm-hmm.